If you ever feel out of control around food, you're not alone, and you're in the right place to learn practical, no-nonsense information about why you binge and how to stop. Binge eating does not mean that something is wrong with you. It's a natural but primitive brain response that you can correct. If you're ready for change, sign up for the Brain Over Binge self-paced online course for less than $20 per month. And if you feel you need personalized support, we also offer one-on-one coaching and group coaching. To learn more, go to brainoverbinge.com forward slash subscribe. And I hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to the Brain Over Binge podcast, where you learn a simple brain-based approach to ending binge eating. This is the last show of 2020. I want to thank you for listening this year, whether this is your first episode or you've been with me for a while. I want to wish you and your family a happy new year, even though it feels a bit strange to say that considering everything that we've been through. But I hope that you are feeling hopeful about the year ahead. Today, I'm sharing a conversation that I recently had with Pauline Henwies about digestive health. Pauline not only healed her own body after a long struggle with bulimia, she's also helped thousands of other women improve their health and their lives. Healing the digestive system is a topic that I address to an extent in the Brain Over Binge Recovery Guide with the help of Pauline, but today Pauline goes into more detail about gut health in eating disorder recovery and about her own story as well. I hope you find it inspiring and helpful. One thing I want to mention before I share the interview is that Pauline does talk about the possibility of adding some supplements to your diet or making other dietary changes due to food sensitivities or food allergies. Like other suggestions on this podcast, you need to decide what's right for you and always talk to your doctor or health professional about taking supplements, vitamins, and minerals or making any dietary changes to address digestive issues. Everyone is different and a podcast can only give general guidance, not individualized recommendations. Like I say at the end of every show, this podcast is not a substitute for medical advice, but I hope that you can use what you hear today to think about what may be right for you and what nutritional support you may need on your journey to healing. Pauline also offers health and nutrition coaching if you need more assistance in this area, and her website is in the show description. The last thing I want to mention is a quick reminder of what I explained in detail at the end of the previous episode, and that is that you can now get the Brain Over Binge course on a monthly subscription basis for only $10.99 per month, which I hope makes the course doable for anyone who wants to make change in 2021. I really appreciate you being here today and listening to those quick announcements, and now I'll share the interview with Pauline. Today I'm happy to be talking with Pauline Henwies. She overcame her own struggle with bulimia, and she's now a holistic health and nutrition expert, a coach, and a yoga instructor. Welcome to the show, Pauline. Hi there. Hi. I'm so glad to have you. I wanted to bring Pauline on the show today because of how she incorporates information about digestive health into her practice of helping people with eating disorders. I know this will be of interest to many of you because digestive health has become a popular topic as we learn more about it and just how important our gut is to our overall well-being. Pauline actually contributed to my second book, The Brain Over Binge Recovery Guide, with a section titled Nutrition in Recovery. And in that section, she discussed nutrient deficiency in people with eating disorders and some simple ways to re-nourish the body in recovery. And today we're going to dive deeper into that and take a look at issues surrounding digestive health in much more detail. And I hope that you'll find our discussion useful. First, I'd love for you to get to know Pauline a little better. So, Pauline, can you talk a little bit about your own struggle with an eating disorder and recovery and also a little about the work you do today? Sure. Well, for me, it all started when I was pretty young, around 13, like many of us, with anorexia, most of all. you know. And then, obviously, anorexia spiraled into bulimia. And then I lived like that with a very strong bulimia for about 13 years. And when I was about 26, I really hit rock bottom and my health started to be in danger, really. So I had a lot of health issues. I had uh, electrolytes imbalance, so my heartbeat was not uh, regular anymore. I was losing my hair. Um, I had amenorrhea, obviously, uh, but I had also lots of other issues that you have with eating disorders. So my metabolism was 
really low. I was living in a cold country. I was cold all the time, you know. But most of all, it was really hard, you know, on a psychological level. I was very much into a, like, depression-like mood all the time. And it was a hard time. And this is only when I kind of hit rock bottom and realized that, hey, girl, what are you doing to yourself? You need to, you know, you need to do something because obviously... You know, I couldn't find any answer in traditional medicine. And this is when I started um, to research a lot of things and try also a lot of things on myself. And finally, you know, you know, it took me a few years, but I managed to recover. Yeah, that's awesome. And it seems like you had a lot of problems that stemmed from the eating disorder itself, like, you know, the health conditions. And do you think a lot of that was based in your digestion being off and you not absorbing nutrients? Yeah, well, it's a very good question. Definitely, I think uh, why your health is degrading when you have an eating disorder is definitely because you don't absorb uh, what you need to function properly. So definitely your body needs to absorb uh, vitamins, minerals, nutrients to be able to function, like to keep your metabolism high, to replenish the cells, to keep your mood uh, high, to lots of different things, basically, to just um, function like a normal person. And when you deprive yourself for so long, definitely, not only you don't give to your body what it needs, but because of your malnourished, you create a lot of problems. But you also create maybe on the long term, like inflammations and um, things like that, that can really degrade very, you know, exponentially, I would say, over time. And obviously, at one stage, you, you hit a point where your your health is in a very, very bad condition. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, I think in your work, you do a lot to help people overcome that and help people, like I said, re-nourish themselves. And both of us, I know, teach that the calorie deprivation and the dieting and the food deprivation, it really spirals into binge eating in a lot of cases. And the binge eating itself like becomes this huge problem that also causes health conditions. So by the time that people start trying to recover, they've been through so much as far as their body and what they've kind of done to their digestive health. So, you know, I want to talk about that a little more about how people can heal themselves, because it's one thing to learn to eat enough. And it's so important. Both of us, I know, in recovery, teach people that you have to eat enough food. You cannot keep yourself in that food deprived state. But also, everything gets out of balance. I guess, first of all, let's explain why it gets out of balance. I know you've talked about that a little bit, but why is in a binge eater, let's say someone's in the phase where they're already binge eating, how does that throw the body out of balance and digestive health out of balance? Yeah. Well, as you explain it really well in your book as well, is like uh, when you deprive yourself, you have to consider that it's a vital functionality of your body. I, I really like the, um, the comparison with breathing, for example. It's like you tell yourself, I should, you know, control my breath because if I'm breathing too heavily, I might put on weight or something like that, right? So you start to control how you breathe. But you can stop breathing for a little while, you know, or control your breath for a little while. But at one stage, it's not sustainable. And it, because it's vital to your survival, at one stage, your body will just take over and force you to breathe, right? And what you're going to do when you're going to start breathing, you're going to start by breathing very heavily, and it's going to be totally out of control. You have to catch up on what you flacked, right, of what you missed, it's exactly the same with food, you know, as you deprive yourself, you're, you, you're really addressing a vital point for your survival. So at one stage, your body will just take over and you will have no control over it. And this is when we spiral into binge eating, right? And when you start binge eating, obviously, you, you start being attracted by the, the, the kind of food that have been designed by human to make them really attractive, like lots of sugar, lots of fat, not the, the good types of fat. But why? Because this is the food that will bring you the most calories, the most energy. And this is what your body needs, right? So obviously, you will be attracted by this kind of things. But this kind of things are also the food that build inflammation and that start to destroy, you know, your gut flora and your gut health. And this is how things can very much spiral out of control because you need that nutrition. So you are attracted in, in an out of control way, so to speak, 
to the foods that are actually toxic for yourself, right? Yeah, it's, you know, you have that survival reaction that you have to eat so much, like to make up for the food deprivation. And like I talk about a lot, it is a healthy reaction by your brain. I mean, the foods that you eat aren't healthy and the whole situation leads to problems, but it is your brain trying to protect you from starvation. And and the foods we have today makes it so that those are the most attractive. So you eat massive amounts of these foods and it becomes habitual and you start doing it over and over. And like you said, those foods will degrade the digestive system. And I know that we'll we'll talk about probably a little later. It's not that we're saying you have to have perfect gut health to recover. Like that's not it at all. But to consider healing yourself and to consider how you'll, you know, digest food and have energy for the rest of your life, it is something to consider. So, you know, why do you think that considering digestive health is something that people should do in recovery? And then also what are some basic steps that people can take to heal their their digestive system? Yeah, sure. And um, something to add to the previous point as well is not to mention that this kind of food, you know, that have been processed are also highly addictive. So it can really spiral in an out of control way. And why is it so important to address gut health? To me, it's because the more I researched and the more I found that a lot of issues and not only eating disorders are linked to gut health and gut health are kind of the foundation if you want to have a balanced life anyway and a stable health, all right, not only recover from your eating disorder. And I think modern science also links more and more to gut health. And so to me, it's a, a very good starting point to address eating disorder because when you have an eating disorder and you are actively binging and purging, your digestion is not happening properly anymore. Okay, so that means that you have a hard time processing things. You don't absorb what you should absorb. Uh, you might have lots of digestive issues linked to that as well, like, like bloating or the fact that your uh, eczema, for example, or mood swings, all these kind of things um, are linked to digestion. So when you start to address your digestion, not only you will help your body getting renourished, so that means that you will starve less and less, renourish your body, replenish your your nutrients, and so you will be less attracted by the wrong kind of food on the long term. But you're also building a very strong foundation for uh, balanced health. Yeah, definitely. And do you think that, you know, we talked about sort of that survival reaction to calorie deprivation. Do you think that even if someone is, let's say, eating enough food, like to meet their physical needs, can they still be malnourished just based on the fact that their body's not absorbing nutrients and and therefore still be in that survival state, even though they're technically eating enough food? Yeah, that's a very good question because yes, I totally think this is possible. And I've seen that for many people that I've coached with, but I also seen that in my own recovery. At one stage I was eating normally. I was not uh, binging and purging that much, you know, it still happened maybe, but it was very rare, but still my body wasn't recovered, right? I was still lacking of a lot of things, okay? It's like, it's not about what you eat, it's very much about what you absorb, okay? So you can be eating totally like a great diet and still not absorbing what you need. So that's very uh, important and that links also to the fact what can you do to start actually addressing your gut health and replenishing your body because when we have an eating disorder, the, the gut is so inflamed and not working properly. I always recommend uh, starting with some kind of supplementation like in minerals, vitamins, all these kind of things, sometimes also herbs in order to train your digestion to to heal and to be stronger and to digest food properly. So one of the things that you can do to see if there is a problem in your nutrition or to see if, you know, your body is building too much inflammation is very much a kind of elimination diet. But it's very tricky, you know, to to do that when you are already struggling with an eating disorder, okay? It's, it's not very compatible. So that's why this is not what I'm, I would recommend to to do in the first place, okay? Obviously, on in the long term, you will have to look at your digestion and your diet to see if something is making you sick, which is very 
possible, you know, a food sensitivity that hasn't been addressed or a food allergy that hasn't been addressed or all these kind of things can very much create problems in your digestion. But this is not the first uh, step I would take. I would very much recommend to start supplementing your diet in order to give your body a very bioavailable, absorbable source of nutrients, you know, vitamins, minerals, you know, and things like that. Yeah, that makes sense. It's like you're telling yourself, what can I add to my diet? What can I give myself to help myself digest instead of what can I take away? Because that can often lead to that mindset of deprivation. You know, even if at some point you do find that these foods affect you, trying to give them up really early in recovery is probably going to to lead to more problems. I recommend that people eat in the least restrictive way possible. And sometimes it's not possible for certain people to eat certain food based on, you know, true food food allergies. So, you know, in those cases, obviously you you can't eat those foods, but I like that you kind of wait to do that until later on. You know, do you kind of wait until binge eating stops to help people try to find food sensitivities? Well, that's the tricky question because, um, well, first of all, everyone is different. It's very difficult to wait that the binging stops in order to address that. I would wait that the health is more stable, that the binging and purging is more like kind of, you know, under control, I would say. And I will wait also that to see that the person can catch herself also with what's happening in her, her mind, all right? And Definitely, your book is all about that, you know, because I think this is a big component, you know, being able to take a step back and see, you know, your own destructive patterns getting out of control. And that way you can take a step back. And when the the person is able to do that and is supplementing her diet for about one or two months, and then the binging, purging episodes are more like under control, then I would start to address, you know, food sensitivities, food allergies, inflammation in the body and all these kind of things that can actually keep you stuck in the binging, uh, purging cycles. I like how you mentioned this mental aspect of it, because I think that the, the urges to binge can kind of come up with reasons that you should binge. And I think that while, of course, digestive health is very important in healing the body, I think the brain can sometimes say things like, oh, well, you have poor digestion, so you need to binge or, you know, you're sensitive to this food and you ate it. So now you should just give up and binge. And I think that sometimes the brain can encourage you to binge based on like what it thinks is wrong with your eating. Like, oh, I didn't eat perfectly, so I might as well binge. And, you know, no one would say that binging is a cure for food sensitivity or because you have a food sensitivity, it makes sense to binge. So I think that it helps people to see this, that like we're not saying and you're not saying that food sensitivities mean that binging is inevitable. Yeah, totally, totally. And it's true, you know, and I think at the beginning in recovery, you have to manage both. All right. But because definitely if you have a food sensitivity and don't digest properly, you might feel bloated and you might get these feelings, you know, that are not comfortable, you know, in your stomach. And then obviously in the past, you've been trained that as soon as you feel that, you just binge and purge, and then it's all going to be better, right? <laughs> Obviously, you have to get over this kind of thoughts patterns. You know, you, okay, for a while, I might have to sit with the discomfort and trust that it's going to go away, and I know that my brain is going to tell me 100 reasons <laughs> to binge and purge, and I know that for a while, I have, you know, to try to get over this and listen, but still sit with the discomfort. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's kind of reminding people that if you go to a, a holistic health coach like yourself or a doctor or a nutritionist and you explain your symptoms and your bloating and your digestive discomfort and your food sensitivity sensitivities, they would never say the solution is to binge. So therefore, when your brain tells you that, you can dismiss that. You can learn that that's a faulty thought. That's not a thought you should follow. And once you can dismiss that thought, then you're better able to work on your di your digestion because you can avoid the binges. And when you avoid the binges, that's a huge step toward better health and toward just allowing yourself to heal without the binge eating constantly getting in the way. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's so true. And something I like to remind the people I'm working with as well is like, you know, uh, progress is non-linear, right? So there might have days where, okay, you relapsed. And what I think is that often or 
binge eating mindset will keep us in a like perfectionism kind of you know mindset and what I like to say is like I think deeply that perfectionism is just a fear of judgment right of not being perfect and I think like eating disorders are a lot about that if you can step back from that you know and being okay with the fact of not being perfect or not feeling great all the time or, um, you know, not feeling that your digestion is going really well at one stage and still sit there and say, it's okay, it's totally fine, I will get over this, you know, I will be more loving to myself, then in that case, you know, you're gonna make progress. And it's not about having all of this figure out straight away as well. Yeah, helping people get over that perfectionistic mindset is super helpful because you don't want to get in a situation where you feel like you ate the wrong thing or you didn't take your proper supplements and then think that you have failed. So I think that's a really great reminder. Something I want to talk about as far as digestive health is the cravings and sort of how cravings relate to binge urges. And this can be kind of a complicated topic for people, I think, because when you stop binging, that doesn't mean that you don't have cravings anymore. You know, cravings are kind of a natural part of the human experience. But if you have digestive issues, cravings can be more intense, more frequent. They can maybe lead to more binge urges. So um, something I heard you say in a video is you said that working on nourishing the body and working on gut health can reduce the intensity and the frequency of binge urges. And I want to talk about that. Like, how does that work, you know, because there's a mental aspect and there's a physical aspect. So as far as the physical aspect, you know, how can healing the gut sort of reduce cravings and that that drive to eat all these massive quantities of highly processed sugary foods? Yeah, well, I agree 100% with you when you said like cravings for me is also very much there is one part physical and one part, um, you know, mental or emotional, I would say. And then for the physical part, because you heal your gut and you give it what it needs to replenish what it needs, you know, you're going to renourish your whole body. Cravings are often stemming from the fact that you're lacking something, you know. Cravings are just your body telling you that it needs something. Absolutely, you know. If you're craving, let's say, ice cream, you might just actually need some energy, right, uh, because of the sugar, or you might need some, you know, calcium, let's say, you know, because of, uh, of the milk, or if you're craving chocolate, you might actually be lacking of magnesium, right? So it's very easy to have these cravings for chocolate before our periods, for example, because often we need more magnesium at that stage. But if you're replenishing your body and healing your gut, you will absorb all of that better. And so Usually, the cravings are also less intense and less frequent when you renourish your body properly and when you heal your gut. It's kind of interesting to distinguish kind of normal cravings from binge urges. Do you have maybe cravings that are problematic in a way in that they're based in nutrient deficiencies or they're based in digestive issues or issues with the gut flora? And I think that... um you know, seeing also that binging is not a cure for any of that can help you move forward. So that way, if you have cravings that you think that are problematic and you like keep having cravings for chocolate, for example, like, okay, you can work on that. I think that people a lot of times get in the mindset where they, they have a craving for chocolate, they follow it and they think, oh, I've failed and I might as well binge. And that's kind of where that binging cycle is perpetuated. But if you can have that craving for chocolate and you can you know, listen to it either by following it or by deciphering it, like figuring out like what it's caused from, if there's any underlying deficiencies, things like that. Like you almost can become a detective of your cravings and kind of figure out how you can help yourself have less problematic cravings. Um, is that kind of making sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. 100 person. Because, uh, What you also have to understand is like it's not because you recover from your eating disorder that you will not have cravings anymore, but you will learn to trust your body. When you have an eating disorder, the cravings are often, as you mentioned, spiraling out of control, binging and purging. Okay, but here you start, you know, learning that your body is your friend. And because it sends some kind of message, you have to listen to that. And in a way, you have to understand why you have that. But you can also learn to honor the cravings because they are not, you know, spiraling down into a full binge. So sometimes you will want an ice cream and that's totally fine, but you will eat it 
with love, you know, and not, oh, I shouldn't do that. And I've done that and I failed and I better binge and purge, right? It's like the relationship with your own body and the cravings that it sends to you is totally different. And I'm sure you you see what I mean as well. Yeah, I do. I think that reducing cravings by healing your gut can help. It can just help you feel more in balance. And if you're consumed by cravings, it's really hard to kind of develop a way of eating that works for you. So I think all of this kind of can go hand in hand and it's it's kind of nuanced and everyone is different. So I think that you can take what you learn from Pauline or from me or from other people um, in nutrition, the nutrition field, and just see what works for you and how you can heal your own body because everyone is so different. So this has been really helpful and I'll share some links in the show notes to your work and to your website at the end so people can learn more about this. And you have some great videos about some of these topics. Like today I saw one about blood type and eating disorders, which was super interesting. So um, there will be links in the show notes to that. And just to wrap up the show, I want to talk about just the fact that this has been a difficult year for everyone. You know, it's we've all been in our homes. We've been isolated. People have changed their eating habits this year. You know, even people without eating disorders and possibly have developed some digestive issues. And I was wondering if you could wrap up this conversation with just some encouraging words to help people who feel like their gut health has suffered this year just based on all the changes and maybe some tips for improving nutrition during this difficult time. Yeah, it's true that it's been a very difficult time uh, for all of us. You know, even those who don't have an eating disorder have struggles with their food nowadays, you know, because they stay home all the time. The first thing is I like to say, like, it's good to try to take this as an opportunity because you might have a problem that you didn't have before or it might have worsened because of the, the health crisis. But it's because it got worse that he have an opportunity to look at the problem in the face, right? And that's the very foundation and the very first step of change, all right? This is to be disappointed or to be unhappy about the reality that we have now, okay? This is the first step for change. Otherwise, you keep nourishing the wrong patterns because, you know, it's not that good, but it's okay. And so change never happens. So if you are courageous enough to look at your problem in the face and say, okay, I don't want that in my life anymore, then you're ready for change. And that's what you want as a catalyst for change. And then you can start doing like little steps to take care of yourself better and to improve that, not to be too harsh on yourself because it never, you know, it never brings anything good, but you can start, for example, uh, being more mindful when you eat or adding some kind of supplements in your diet. So you make sure that you give your body exactly what it needs, you know, and and that you don't lack of anything. Like a good multivitamin, for example, is a good first step. You can combine that with making sure that you have all the B vitamins, uh, some kind of minerals like magnesium, for example, zinc. You can start adding more movement into uh, your day as well. And it might just be a 20-minute walk outside because when you move, you your body is behaving differently. You know, you boost your metabolism, you boost your endorphins, so you feel better. All these kind of things are good little steps to take. And yeah, really taking care of yourself very well, like 15 minutes of, you know, me time a day with a good bath or a good book or, you know, a nice cup of tea are always good little moments when you can recenter and really observe what's going on in your life to start making improvements. I hope that helps. Yeah, I love that it's simple. Like it doesn't have to be anything complicated. And I think that that's really useful for people these days when life does feel so complicated and, and so overwhelming. And just to realize that it only has to be, you know, 15 minutes or taking some vitamins or doing just really small steps. And then over time, you might want to take bigger steps. But right now, you know, it's just about doing those simple things to help yourself get through this the best we can and to help your, your body heal. So I think this has really been helpful. And there is, you know, a lot of nutrition information out there as far as, you know, healing yourself. But people like Pauline have a lot of experience with the holistic health. So Pauline, can you, I talked a little bit about your website. Can you talk a little bit more about what you do and then how people can work with you? Yeah, sure. So I'm helping women with bulimia to recover. And I have a website with a lot of free resources and information. It's paulineanouise.com. 
And there you have like free ebooks, you have free video blogs, articles. Yeah, you can find lots of free resources. And I think it's a great starting point if you want to start getting informed and understand how your body works. Yeah, for sure. And I think the digestive health is really, really useful. Um, you know, the, the aspect of the mental side of it, as far as dismissing these thoughts in your brain, and then the aspect of the physical side of learning to eat enough, learning to heal your body, nourish yourself, heal your gut, just all of that together can just, you know, start you on a path to a, a better life. So thank you so much, Pauline, for coming on the show today. I thought it was really helpful. Thank you. It was a pleasure. I hope this conversation was valuable to you. I've included a blog post and podcast episode about stopping purging in the show description as well, because that was something Pauline mentioned as a factor that affects digestive health. We didn't have time to dive too deeply into how to stop purging, but I hope that the additional resources will help you get control of that harmful behavior so that you can heal your gut. To help you further with stopping binge eating, you can get a copy of my free ebook, The Brain Over Binge Basics, in the show description or on brainoverbinge.com. This ebook shows you how to stop acting on your urges to binge, and it's a great guide to help you get started in recovery. As we wrap up 2020 and enter 2021, I want to encourage you and remind you that you have the power to change your brain and live a binge-free life. The Brain Over Binge podcast is produced and recorded by Brain Over Binge Recovery Coaching, LLC. All work is copyrighted by Brain Over Binge Recovery Coaching, LLC, and all rights are reserved. As a disclaimer, the hosts of the Brain Over Binge podcast are not professional counselors or licensed healthcare providers, and this podcast is not a substitute for medical advice or any form of professional therapy. Eating disorders can have serious health consequences, and you are strongly advised to seek medical attention for matters relating to your health. Please get help when you need it, and good luck on your journey. Need more help? You can find all of our current and upcoming options for support at brainoverbinge.com.